In this video, I will discuss LC3 interrupts and exceptions. On the LC3 machine, there are the following exceptions are supported. The first exception is a privilege mode violation. The second is a illegal opcode violation. And the third is a access control violation. So let's understand what each of these are. Privilege mode violation is simply saying, if you recall, the PSR has a, a bit, which is a privilege bit, which is either zero or one. Zero means you have supervisor privileges and one means you have user privileges and if if the privilege bit is a is a zero and an operation in this case RTI is performed then this triggers the violation one which is that that is you cannot execute the rti instruction with a privilege of being a user here's a illegal opcode violation you may recall that opcode 13 is not valid so if you were ever to execute an instruction where the IR has 1101 in it, then that is an opcode violation. Here is the access control violation. Access control violation is really a memory access control violation. On the LC3, with when in user mode, user mode has a restricted access space of x3000 to xfdff so if you access any area outside of this this is the only valid region you can access any access outside of this region if you access here or here in user mode then that triggers a access violation and here an IR value of that triggers the illegal code op code violation so the interrupts that LC3 supports actually LC3 supports a single interrupt which is a keyboard interrupt and the keyboard interrupt is is triggered by a key press that is if a user strikes a key the act of striking a key will cause a interrupt. So what is common to both what is common to both exceptions and interrupts is all exceptions and interrupts have a unique identity and this identity is called the vector number and 
the vector number is used to access the interrupt vector table so the vector number whatever the vector number is I'm just going to call that VN VN is used as an index if you will into the interrupt vector table so the interrupt vector table on on LC3 starts at X 0 1 0 0 and goes all the way up to X 0 1 F F and the first first three of these are the first three of these are the exceptions these are exceptions in fact there is the the idea of the interrupt vector table is that it is allowing us to have half of these be exceptions and half of these be be interrupts so the interrupt interrupts start at x 0 1 8 0 and this is the location of for an interrupt so what is what is the IVT the IVT is a table that is indexed by the vector number and holds the address of the action or the response when the corresponding exception slash interrupt occurs so this general idea of having the number the vector number correspond to a location is sometimes the reason why we call these to be vectored interrupts slash exceptions the important thing to remember is that for for an for an interrupt to be processed or an exception to be processed the machine needs a needs to suspend current activity and respond respond the response is usually respond to event which means that whatever that event is if in this case the event happens to be a keyboard interrupt and you specified an address in that location so say you have specified an address which is an X let's say 2600 which means at X 2600 we're gonna have some code which is the response to the event which is the interrupt event so that code has to execute and needs to suspend current activity and respond to the event and upon completion resume suspended event suspended activity and that is done this suspend and 
suspend and resume requires save and restore of state and we use the stack to do that so let's let's look at everything in detail now so so let's just focus on interrupts for now because the other exceptions are pretty straightforward as we saw if you for example perform an illegal opcode or an illegal um, uh, memory access or a uh, uh, privilege violation then the code corresponding to that gets executed uh, the the is loaded from the interrupt vector table and in 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 most cases um, these violations are unrecoverable so exceptions are typically because they fall into the category of a fault or a violation uh, the typical response um, typical response is to simply uh, terminate the program or stop your execution that might be a typical response so in this case there is no there is even if we do a save a state we are generally not resuming state so let's look at interrupts an interrupt in the case of interrupts first let's let's see um, how we set up an interrupt that is because we are we are saying that we want an interrupt to occur um, what we are going to do is we're going to do our zeroth step is we're going to make sure that the PSR bit 14 is a one what this tells us is we are enabling interrupts all interrupts the second thing that we're going to do in our setup is we're going to make sure in in the case of LC3 this is not a big deal because there's only one interrupt so all interrupts means the keyboard interrupt but LC3 does have the provision to add other interrupts so the second thing that we're going to do is the KBSR which happens to be at memory address FE00 we're going to change bit 14 to a 1 and this bit is to enable keyboard interrupts the third the second step because we started from zero our next step is to make sure that we we specify an action specify action or response which means we're going to go to the interrupt vector table so the IVT table and we're going to make sure the IVT index by, by x80 which happens to be the index is happens to be the vector number for for our our keyboard so the keyboards interrupt keyboard interrupt vector number is x80 as we as we saw so we're going to make sure that in the interrupt vector table x80 is going to be set to the address of what we want to execute so for example if my if my response is at x2600 this is where we're going to have our response the response is simply a set of lines of code so the response is also called an ISR which stands for interrupt service routine so we're going to make sure that that location in our interrupt vector table 
which is at x0180 in this case because it starts at this is at x0100 so this indexing is simply a matter of adding the offset to it so at that location we're going to make sure we write the value of whatever our address is this is an example which is 2600 but wherever your isr is you can write that we are We are now done with our setup. So let's continue. What should you do as far as the response is concerned, the ISR? The ISR is going to be a block of code. Again, because I wrote at it at x2600, I'm going to say it's a, it has x2600. And, and its its contents are going to be whatever the response is and the last line of it is going to be a dot is going to be a RTI and this is a key step because what this does is it resumes execution of suspended program and one of the things that we also want to do this is a requirement in some sense is we want to make sure that the first thing we do inside our ISR is to do an LDI of whatever register you want of the KBDR in other words our KBDR which is holding key ASCII code of key stroke we're gonna read it the reason we're gonna read that is because you may recall that KBSR has two bits which is bit 14 and bit 15 once the key is struck this is gonna be a one in our setup we made that a one and so the act of finding both of these to be equal to one the and of this when this is one this int signal when this is equal to one is when we interrupt it so when does when 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 we enter into this particular block of code on entry when I enter this this is a one so when I'm executing this line before I execute this line, that has a 1. That's the reason why I reached here. So one of the things we want to make sure that is after I execute this line, I want to make sure that this is no longer a 1, which is means that I've consumed it. So, so by, by reading this character, the act of reading this character, so when I get to the second line of code, when I get to the second line of code, because I've read this, this is considered consumed so this will become a zero and so that becomes a zero and so the interrupt sig interrupt is disabled the int signal is disabled and now I can process the response not doing this is going to have the the negative effect that that the in the int signal is enabled and it continues to be enabled and there's a possibility of being interrupted again and again so so let's let's take stock and see what does the what does the computer do, do in response to an interrupt response on on interrupt what does the CPU do so in a nutshell we are executing some line of code let's say the PC is currently holding I'm just gonna make this up it's it's holding a num 
and address that which means that somewhere somewhere in my code I'm executing a line which is three four five six and I just finished three four five five let's say and I'm gonna about to execute three four five seven so this is the line I'm executing and an external interrupt has occurred so there's an interrupt that occurred which means that the int signal was equal to one so what does the computer do in response well the first thing that it's gonna do is to make sure that it completes this instruction completes current instruction I'll, I'll call this step zero. In step one, it is about to start executing this instruction at three, four, five, seven. So PC has already been PC has been updated to three, four, five, seven. So it's now going to um, check if the int signal is on if the int signal is on which is in this case it is and so what is it's going to do is it's going to suspend so in other words it's going to save the PC come up PSR on the stack but this is this is done in by making sure that we do it properly. So the first step is to make sure that your R6, which is currently holding whatever the stack point, whatever value it's holding, usually it is the user's user program that is being interrupted, let's say. If it's using holding the user stack pointer, now we will find out later that it could be holding something else, but not in LC3. If it's holding the user stack pointer, we're gonna R6 is saved to saved underscore USP, the user stack pointer. B, we're gonna load R6, R6 is loaded with saved SSP that is the SSP stands for the system stack pointer in most cases this happens to be currently x3000 because the users the system stack if you guys if you recall the system stack on on LC3 the system stack is at 2FFF so the bottom of that is 3000 3000 is not a valid location for the stack but the stack the system stack starts there so we're going to load that and then we're going to push PC push PSR and the next step that we're going to perform is we're going to we're going to initialize PSR so now the PSR itself is going to be uh, have a value of x we're gonna run this in uh, privilege mode so we're gonna set the most significant bit to be zero and uh, it'll arbitrarily make our NZP bits 010 and the privilege level in our case happens to be uh, 4 so the privilege level is at bits 10 through 10 9 and 8 is set to 100 because the privilege level for our uh, for the keyboard interrupt is 4. Um, we don't care about this really because there's, if there's only one in interruptible device there's no the privilege level doesn't make much sense so this is bit 15 which is that and and at this point we're going to initialize the PSR and we're going to uh, get into our the PC itself is going to be set to whatever device interrupted we know that the interrupting device in this case is the keyboard and the keyboard vector number is x80 and that's what we know so we'll take this vector number and we'll take 0 x100 which is where the interrupt vector table is and we're going to add to it 
the vector number which happens to be x 80 and we're going to obtain the address which is x 0180 and we're going to set that set the PC to be equal to that And at this point, the execution, because we set it to that value, um, actually it's set to the memory contents of that value. Sorry. PC is set to the memory contents of this, whatever address we come up with, which in our case uh, ends up being x2600. So the effect the net effect is that the code is is going to stop executing here and we will find ourselves in a different location i'm just going to write the address here 2600 and the 2600 code is going to start executing um, uh, notice that at this point the psr has this value but the PSR and PC of the suspended program is put on the stack. So eventually the program is going to run, it's going to do an RTI. So what happens on RTI? On return from interrupt, which is execution of RTI. So so just to give our get back our picture we have x th 3455 x 3456 x 3457 um and and if you recall right now the stack which had two values on it which is x 2 fff and x 2 fFE R6 has the value X2FFE, which is the top of the stack. And there is our PS PC here, and the old PC and the old PSR is here. Um, and so this had a value of X3457, because that's what we pushed onto it. And the PSR value was whatever the PSR value upon finishing this instruction was. PSR is, I'll call this PSR uh, X, if you will, and that's the PSR X. X is the instruction. Uh, on completion of this, that's what the PSR value was. So we are executing the code at X2600 and we hit the RTI statement. So the RTI statement will result in, first we pop to PS, PSR, PC and PSR from stack which means that r6 after this is going to get a value of x 3000 and pc is going to get this new value which is x3 uh, old previous value which is x 3500 and the psr is going to get the psr x now we're going to save R62 SSP. The third step is to restore R62 its original value which you wrote to saved USP because we're returning back and so whatever whatever R6 originally had if it had the user stack pointer it'll get back its original value and then we 
resume. The resumption simply means that the PC has that value, so I'm going to be going back to that location. That wraps it.